You're watching the Cowboys Report, breaking down the news of Tony Pollard. The goal is to beat last month's sub number. 476 is the figure in mind. That was what we had in June. July's been slow. There's not a lot going on, but we can still do it. Hit that sub button for more free Cowboys videos. All right, the Tony Pollard extension did not get done. The Cowboys and the Pollard did not get the extension done before today's franchise tag deadline. Pollard will now play on the $10.09 million tag. Now, Pollard has already signed this franchise tag, so there can be no rescinding of it. And frankly, I'm not sure how close the two sides really got, got to getting a deal done. Um, this outcome, Pollard on the tag, has felt like the expected outcome for a pretty good amount of time right now. It never really seemed like the, the Cowboys were going to get a long-term deal done, especially with the way the running back market looks. The running back market, as I think we're seeing with Jacobs and Barkley and even Dalvin Cook, Joe Mixon, etc., it's not a Zeke Elliott, it's not a good market. Teams are not paying backs because the return on investment isn't high enough. And despite the lack of long-term stability there, it actually makes a lot of sense for Pollard to play this year on a guaranteed $10 million tag. He's maybe looking at like $15 million guaranteed on a deal next year or if he signed one this year. So there's not much incentive for him to take less than that at the current moment. Now, as it sits currently, knowing that the mix-in numbers have not yet been updated to fully factor in the reduction in the salary from the deal, the per year number is they're a little bit wonky still, so asterisk that one. Uh, Barkley at t or Pollard is tied for seventh among the franchise tag backs. That's you know for one year, it's actually really good money, especially as we get into later on when we look at the guaranteed side of it. I think the guaranteed money, especially for teams and players at the running back position, is the most important one out of where things sit for this position, is figuring out how much you're actually probably going to get. So in the end, and I'll go into this more in depth here in a little bit, I do think Pollard's camp is making the right choice to bet on himself. And I don't think any offer from the Cowboys camp that makes sense for them and isn't a wild overpay or like a fully guaranteed crazy deal that doesn't really make much sense for Dallas would be enough for Pollard to not bet on himself given the lack of touches he's had over the course of his NFL career. Now, what this does bring into consideration, this potential reality, it's Tony Pollard's last year with the Dallas Cowboys. Is that the case, or will Dallas bring him back next year? Y for yes, N for no. This is today's pinned comment, so if the ad comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know. Now, the 2024 tag cost is going to be 120% of what Pollard made this past year. That's $12.11 million. Um, in general, the two-year tag figure is normally a good guaranteed figure start when you're doing contract negotiations with a player who's on the tag. Well, that would approach $22 million, or just, uh, just under $22 million, about 21.2, I guess. That would be top five guaranteed money at the running back position. The $12 million next year would almost be top 10, and that includes three players who were on rookie contracts. There is not much guaranteed money at the running back position, and that is why it actually makes sense for Pollard to wait. He's going to get $10 million guaranteed this year. That, that is locked and loaded. The three big deals this past offseason, Smile Sanders, only $6.35 million guaranteed, 13 million, or average, $13 million guaranteed. David Montgomery, $6 million on average, $8.75 guaranteed. Jamal Williams, $4 million on, on average, but a higher guaranteed at $8.15. At minimum, you would fully expect Pollard to get those deals. If he gets the Miles Sanders deal next year, which I think he can get more than that, given his level of play and the impact he's had in the past and his age, his workload, et cetera, he's only getting 7.08 per year, but he's getting top three guaranteed money at $23 million if you factor in that franchise tag year. 
that is why a deal did not get done and frankly didn't get that close to getting done uh, from that perspective. It just, it never materialized for either side because of the likely gamble that Pollard can and should be making. Today's Cowboys report is sponsored by Z Biotics. Let's face it, after y'all hit me with a bunch of super chats, I don't bounce back well the next day. That is until I found Z Biotics. Z Biotics pre alcohol probiotic is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. So here's how it works, folks. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Z-Biotics makes an enzyme to break this byproduct down. It's designed to work like your liver, but in your gut when you need it the most. So drink Z-Biotics before drinking alcohol, drink responsibly, and get a good night's sleep to feel your best tomorrow. Z-Biotics comes in this little handy case, and it comes with six bottles, by the way. There you go. I like that they're lightweight, easy to carry around, transport. It's the summer. You're going around. You're doing stuff. You're having fun out in the heat. Being able to take this with you, small and easy, is actually super valuable. So go to zbiotics.com slash chat sports or, or scan the QR code on screen right now to get 15% off your order when you use code chat sports at checkout. You can all sign up for a subscription as well so you can stay prepared no matter what the time or occasion. Zbiotics is back with a 100% money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they will refund your money, no questions asked. That is zbiotics.com slash chat sports and use the code chat sports at checkout for 15% off. Thank you to Zbiotics for sponsoring today's show. The one good thing about Tony Pollard in terms of if you want to pay him is this. The Cowboys have not overly worked Tony Pollard. His workload, even dating back to college, is on the bottom end of the percentile scales for a player of his production. Like, you don't find that level of impact and that small of, of a workload in both the ground game and the receiving game. And it's not so much the age that gets backs into trouble, it's the workload. Now, Pollard, for the most part, has stayed healthy. There's been some bumps and bruises. It's actually a bigger concern for me than the, the freak ankle injury last year. But if you want to pay Pollard, I think the explosive plays and the limited usage are the two biggest arguments for why he can be different than all these other backs that haven't really been able to make their contracts worthwhile. So it's not this year, obviously. It's next offseason. Do you want to pay Pollard based on what we know right now or, or not? S for you want to sign him. P for you would rather pass and not bring him in. You'd rather just straight up not pay backs at all. Look, for me, it comes down to how you value this position. The running back, whether it's fair or not, it is determined by the market, and the market's not good. The, it's not a great business decision to pay backs significant money. I am a fan of Tony Pollard. There absolutely is a scenario in which I do want to bring him back. His workload has been light. It is not the same level of just constant usage that Ezekiel had, not just at Ohio State and the NFL, but both of them combined. Elliott's workload was massive. That's why he's lost steps. Pollard has not yet. But I am skittish in general with paying backs. You can look at that top 10 highest paid backs list, right? And there's three franchise tag guys on there. There were guys like Ezekiel Elliott, Dalvin Cook that were on there at the beginning of the offseason. That list has changed significantly. It, you don't often get to that final year of the deal. So I feel good about Pollard being the lead back this year. I am a little bit uncertain about the depth as well. I, I, don't, I don't trust the, the, the lack of provenness. I, I believe in Deuce Vaughn, but that's belief. That's not based in fact. That's, that's, that's based in, in hope and the college side of it here. So we'll have to see from that standpoint. Ronald Jones has been you know, mediocre for the most part in his NFL career. Who knows about Malik Davis, Rico, Hunter Lipke, et cetera. So in general, what is your confidence level in the running back room as we enter training camp later next week? Scale it for me from 1 to 10. 
One on the low end, 10 on the high end. You know, there's one note I want to get to here, by the way. The, uh, the big knock I've seen against Tony Pollard, oh, he's a bad pass blocker, which he was at the beginning of his career. But he's gotten better, actually. Um, he, got, he was bad in 2020. That's a, it's all PFF grades. That's horrible. Okay in 2020. Not very good in 2021. He was actually pretty good last year. We just didn't talk about it that much because he was doing other stuff. Zeke, meanwhile, was better earlier in his career, but much like, much, much like most of Zeke's production over the past couple of seasons, going to push that, Chris, uh, Zeke has not been the same caliber of player that he was at the beginning of his career. And the, the numbers have dipped. He was not bad last year. I think 2021 was probably a bit deceptive. But uh, last year, folks, was the first year that Tony Pollard had more pass-blocking snaps than Ezekiel Elliott did. I should tell you about how the Cowboys felt about him in pass protection. My final thoughts here, and I think most of you guys will agree with this. If the Cowboys could do it over again, I don't think they would have franchise tag Tony Pollard. I don't think they saw the market bottoming out in the way that it, I did not see it happening like this where everybody got cut and nobody found a way to, to pay backs. Miles Sanders got next to nothing out of his deal with the Panthers, relatively speaking. Saquon Barkley does not get paid. Josh Jacobs does not get paid. If the Cowboys could do it over, I think they would have, they would have not tagged Tony Pollard, and they would have been able to find a way to get him on, maybe it was like a three-year, $23 million deal. Now, that's the benefit of hindsight, to be clear, but it is worth mentioning. Also worth mentioning, the Giants, we are now past the deadline, officially as we film this on our live show, have not paid Saquon Barkley. No deal agreed to for Barkley and for Jacobs. Now, Barkley is threatened to skip and hold out of week one, that he would not be there. He would, he would just go home. He would not play in week one. I would be surprised if that happens, but because the Cowboys and Giants play in week one, that certainly is worth keeping an eye out for. The one note, by the way, Saquon Barkley tweeted out, it is what it is. Might not be a good sign for him and the Giants moving forward, but we'll keep an eye on that later on. We'll see if he's there for camp and if he plays in week one.